right, tonight you're going to learn rotations 9-3. Remember that a rotation is a transformation that turns a figure around a fixed point called the center of rotation. A rotation is an isometry, so the image of a rotated figure is congruent to the pre-image. Now remember, unless stated, Otherwise, any rotation that we do is counterclockwise. Okay, examples of rotation. Is A a rotation? Looks like a flip to me, so it looks like a reflection. What about B? Yes, that is rotation. What about A? Nope, looks like a translation, a slide, down and over. And then what about B? Yes. That is a rotation. It is a turn around a fixed point there. Okay, rotation. A rotation is a transformation around a point P called the center of rotation such that each point and its image are the same distance from P and such that all angles with vertex P formed by a point and its image are congruent. So in the figure you have angle A, P, A prime as the angle of rotation. So we have the center of rotation, point A, and you notice that this segment and this segment are congruent, and the rotation around the center point, point B, to A prime. All right, a couple rules here. 90 degree rotation about the origin is where you flip your X and Y coordinate and your Y value is now negative. When it's a rotation of 180 degrees, you keep your X and Y the same, but they are both opposite. All right, so let's apply this. So let's go ahead and make your coordinates here. here. We've got a triangle JKL and we are going to rotate it 180 degrees around the origin. Okay, so let's start with the rule. When it's 180 degrees, you keep your coordinates but change them to their opposite. Okay, so J prime is now going to be a negative 2, negative 2. K prime is now going to be a negative 4, 5. And L is now going to be a 1, negative 6. Okay, let's draw a pre-image first. So J is 2, 2, 4, negative 5, and negative 1, 6. Okay, so there's an example of our pre-image. And then for our image, a 180 degrees counterclockwise, it's going to be Okay, you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to leave you alone. Do it on your own.
you start with your blue pre-image, do a 180 degree rotation around the origin and you end up with the red image. Okay, a Ferris wheel has a hundred foot diameter and takes 60 seconds to make a complete rotation. A chair starts at 100 zero. After five seconds, what are the coordinates of its location to the nearest tenth? Okay, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so we have a diameter of 100. Okay. So this point here is going to be 100 zero. Okay, diameter. All right, what else do we know here? Um, we need to find the angle of rotation. Okay, so it's 60 seconds for a full rotation, and it's after five seconds. So we need to find that angle of rotation. So we want to times that by 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle. And when we do that, we get, actually it's going to be exactly 30 degrees. Okay. All right, so we have the line going here, okay, angle of rotation. So this right here is 30 degrees. So what can we do here? Well, we can make a point on this line right here, actually it should be, make that a little better, should be where these intersect and draw a vertical line. We have a vertical and horizontal line, so we have a right triangle here, so we can start thinking our trig ratios. But guys, we need a side measurement, okay? This horizontal line here is not 100 because this point here is past, all right? However, this is part of that rotation. This is also the diameter of that circle. This green arc is part of the circle. So this right here is 100, okay? So what we need to do is what are the coordinates of its location to the nearest tenth? We need to find out what coordinates are this right here. So we need, let's call this X and call this Y. So we can list those coordinates, okay? So for X, we have adjacent hypotenuse, right? So we can take the cosine of 30 degrees and put X over 100 to find out the value of that horizontal line X. And when we get, do that, we get approximately 86.6, okay? So the value from here to this point right here is 86.6. And now to find Y, we have opposite hypotenuse. So we can take the sine of 30 degrees and find the value of Y and we get, actually it's very precise, we get 50. Okay, so this x value is 86.6, this y value is 50. So the question is, what are the coordinates of where the wheel is going to be after a five second rotation? So the x value horizontal is 86.6, and your vertical y is 50. So here's your answer. Okay. All right. Let's see you get this one started on your own.
Okay, last one. Okay, so when we draw this one, I'm trying to hurry so I don't have to do a second video here. Um, let's see, we have a radius of six feet. So this is six zero. Takes five seconds to make a complete rotation. Okay. A bucket starts at a position six zero. Got that? What are the coordinates of the bucket after two seconds? So two out of five times three sixty. And what do you get? You get 144 degrees. Okay? So 144 degrees is going to be over here somewhere. Because this is 144 degrees. Okay? All right, so our radius is 6, so this is going to be 6. Let's do a vertical line. Here's our right angle. What can we do to help us here? Well, how can we find this angle right here? We can take 180 and minus the 44 because this is a straight edge, even though it doesn't look like one, and we get 36 degrees. So this is 36 degrees. So we need to find our x and our y value. Okay, so the cosine, 36 degrees, equals x over 6. However, we need to be careful here, guys, because this is negative x. All right, so that's going to be a negative x because of where it is on the coordinate plane. So you get negative 4.9. And then to find the vertical, the y, you take the sine of 36. Now, y is in quadrant 2, so it is positive, and you get 3.5. So our coordinates left negative 4.9, up positive 3.5. That's it, guys. Have a good one.